We are live. All right. Here we go. Ta-da. Okay. Let me get this started here. <coughs> Figured out the problem to get all the stuff off the screen. Let me start up my uh, phone here so that way I can answer you guys' questions. I'm going to plug it in so it can be charging as well. Go to my channel. Now there's about a 60 second delay here. Boom. Okay. And let's see. All right. So we're started here. All right. I've got this. Make sure I got all the ringers down and all that. I do now. Okay. Chat's up. So I'll check it ever so often, you guys, during the feed. Bear with me. We're going to get started. We're going to be making a pulley tonight for a uh, Dodge pickup power steering pump pulley. Now, people are like, man, those are cheap in the wrecking yard. Uh, we went to the wrecking yard, the you pull it place. Every single one of them are bent. And I'll show you just how bad they're bent. I mean, you can, I'll put this on the mandrel and show you. So we're going to make one. I've got everything set up. Let me get my uh, <coughs> stuff set up here, how I want it set up real quick like this other charger so my phone doesn't die real quick like. Ah, uh, we should be good for a little while. All right. You set that there. We got the wind blowing out there. Let me go ahead and get my uh, apron on here. So yeah. Getting all the little bugs figured out on the uh, live feed stuff. Like I said, the other one. <clears throat> Just getting getting used to it, figuring out all the little isms. this started so yeah you'll hear weird noises gusting 40 50 miles an hour here today I know people are waiting to join I put out the notification today and let's see here if we got any questions that's popped up yet nope not yet. clunk all right I'm going to set this actually I'm gonna set this right over here so it's out of the way but yet I can glance over at it and it's sitting up to see if anybody has a question. All right. So we're going to be working on today. I've got two of these here. Let me move that one over. Turn that off. Turn that out of the way. All right. Wait for more of you guys to join up. Uh, let's see. more drilling gonna need the heavier bits or not the heavier but bigger bits all right there we go put this back over here it belongs everything good to go all right so let's see here all right running live all right let me get everything kind of how I want it a bit wider stance. All right, so what we're going to be doing, I'm uh, going to be doing stuff on a mandrel again. So I will show you guys first just how bent this is. I'll put it on this mandrel here and tighten it up. You guys will see just how bad it is. So you can see as it spins just how, yeah. I mean, literally, you can see it's just, and pretty much everyone else at the at the wrecking yard, yeah, it's literally like way out, like there. I'm holding this straight, and you can see it's just, you know, <laughs> that's how bad it is. So, I'm going to take that off. Pretty much everyone else at the wrecking yard was bent like, a lot of them got bent because just like that they were bent or kinked 
because guys out, out at that you pull it place a lot of guys don't care I mean you know anyway so we're gonna build one for it uh, we are gonna need this for just basic measurements and overall thickness First, we're going to have to get an ID on this thing. Here's our chunk of material that we're going to use. We've got some 6061 aluminum, big giant, about five and a half inch piece here. Let's see real quick. I'm going to give you guys some basic. Wait for the rest of everyone to join here. So this is a six inch piece of 6061. Our pulley is approximately six inches well the OD on it is like five nine five inch nine hundred and thirty three thousand um, and that's just the outside diameter um, we are going to make grooves and everything in here it's going to be a groove pulley uh, we're not going to recreate the holes in there like this we'll we will put some in there uh, we're going to make similar contours it's kind of a bit to do creative license uh, the bore on here matter of fact I've got the pump here that this goes on we're going to make a, a a nice tight press fit and we are going to machine in the grooves in there to be able to remove the pulley if we need to so matter of fact i want that pump over here to measure because on that pump also we are rebuilding the shaft on it or not the shaft the uh we had to change out the uh, the bushing okay so I've got the old bushing out we got someone meeting up here from Oregon hope you're having a great day my friend I am thanks for watching um, so here's the shaft which it's a rotary vein I've got it all apart over there the bushing that goes in the housing I'm going to make a and I'm gonna do a video on it live video uh, probably this weekend uh, I'm gonna make a special driver tool and I'll show you what I'm talking about while we wait for more people to join, uh, let me show you real quick. Because the one that was in here was all messed up. And I had it. Oh, it's in the rebuild kit over there. Anyway, so, but I'll show you another video. Here's the pump. Uh, the bushing that goes in here for this, okay, was bad. We had to machine the old one out. I'm going to make a tool press to press the new one in, which you can press it either way. There's no lip. Um, we had to go in, and the way I got that out, it didn't want to press out. So I just set this up, and I bored it out till I had enough of it bored out to where I could just, like, pull it out. So, hey, Mom, she's watching. Alright, I'm going to set this over here. Set that there. We don't need that right now. Actually, I need this. Because it's going to be a press fit. So we're going to measure the difference between the amount of press between this and this. So let's measure that real quick. Because we want it to be a nice, tight press fit. First, let's measure the shaft. Seven hundred and fifty one seven hundred and fifty one seven hundred and fifty one so it's seven hundred and fifty one thou let's just write this down just so we can see how much of a press fit it's going to require let me get that off there that's from an old job my denatured alcohol is right here. Let me grab a rag. I'll show you get started here. Let me kind of point this down. So I like to okay, clean off the writing board, as it were. So 751 thou point seven fifty one is the shaft. Now let's measure the ID on the pulley here. 
and I have a snap gauge here. Okay, we're going to take a measurement real quick. I'm going to set this down to do this. It's almost like that one doesn't want to. It's there. Okay. Let's measure it. It's right at the three-quarter mark, which is the pretty much the standard or the the range on this. We are seven forty-eight. Let me check it in a different area. Checking a couple little areas. About three thousandths press is it pretty much normal. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's just right there at the the verge. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, 748. Yeah, so 748. Let's write that down. That's what we're going to have to get to. 0 0.748, 4950, 51. So we are a 0 0.003 press. Okay, so we got a three thousandths difference that we need to have between this and this. All right, <laughs> if you guys have any questions, feel free. Um, I've got the uh, phone up over here, and I'll answer any questions during this uh, this video. I'm going to set these back over here out of the way for right now, so we can get started. Uh, I did some prep, some I didn't, so you guys can kind of see how I uh, go about setting things up. Uh, first off, we're going to have to obviously get it to where it'll hold this. So we're going to flip our jaws around and do a quick wipe down with this before I get started. I kind of wipe the crud off my jaws and I've got the e-stop in. Let me make sure the compressor is shut off so it doesn't kick on during the process. That's the last thing I want to do is have that thing kick on during the video because it'll just be really noisy. All right, so, I'm gonna take those out first. My little deal over here, my little breaker bar. throw this in low. We're going to flip all these. I'm going to come through here first and just crank them loose. Make sure you guys can see what's going on here. Yeah, okay. these I cleaned up here uh, the other day so there wasn't a lot of junk behind them. Generally when I get done if there's a lot of cleaning or uh, solvent or not solvent uh, the coolant 
I'll get in here and blow these out. And I did that the other day and brushed it out. So these haven't done a, had a whole, otherwise when I flip these around, if there's like lots of chips and junk, I get in here and blow it all out first before I fasten these back down. give it a little crank just to make sure nothing crazy just kind of give a little okay. all right nothing crazy there all right so they're switched around Let's spin everything out and we got to get six inches here what we're going to do first as we're going to set this up, we're going to face uh, and drill, and we're going to get our uh, close to our OD, or actually we'll get on our OD first, or, or not OD, the ID, the bore. We'll get the bore set up first, because we want everything to be off the bore, so. All right. And check it. All right, let's get set up here. We're gonna do a face cut. And let's see. I wanna make sure you guys have a good view of this. Any other questions, you guys, be sure to let me know and we'll at, get them added in there. Get you a good view. And we'll get zoomed in here. You guys will start seeing some cutting action. Actually, I want to move the camera a little bit. I'm gonna pardon the. Let's see if I can get you guys right in here on the end. Get some stuff out of the way. There we go. That way you're literally at the end. I can move that out of the way and you can see what's going on. That's a better view. That way when I move the compound in and out, it's not uh, messing things up. All right. Get you guys down just a smidge in there. All right, there's a good view. Cool. Well, let's see, which tool do we want to use first? We're gonna just face all this off. Clean it up. I may have to adjust my compound a little bit, which is fine. Aluminum and I like using WD-40 on aluminum. <laughs> I had it turned in left hand. Let's try that. I'm like, why is it going out from the other day? Uh, make sure we're in. There we go. Now it'll work better. Especially 
on aluminum. center. We're going to drill some holes and get started. All that good stuff. inch bit through here to get started because we're just under and then we'll end up boring to uh, to finish dimension or that's the game plan anyway so let me grab this here I've got a half inch set out of this titanium set that I got from drill hog just grab one of those gonna go straight to half inch punch a hole Get with it. Get our WD forty ready. guys got any questions post them up on and I'll answer them. Let me spin them back. All right. Get this out of the way. What I may do I get my boring head ready. Or not boring head, boring bar. I want to sneak up on it. But first, so we ran a half inch and now we're gonna run a a 5 8 box. There we go. Actually, let's just go. Let's go 11 16 and then we'll bore up to where we need to be because even at 11 16 we're. you know, 689,000, so yeah, let's do 11 sixteenths. That way we can sneak up on it. We got more room, we're not doing a lot of boring with the boring bar. Just go in here with 11 sixteenths next and get with it. these big bits doing this I'll clean them up just get my basic wipe slap them right back in the uh, box where they go Whoop. sorry about that that way and they're out of the way now right. so now I'm gonna back you guys up just a little bit here so you can see what's going on so now we are at 
small boring head and we're going to slowly sneak up on all this first and square it back up about like that a little bit oh, back it up all right now I've got this always when you're doing your boring you want to try to keep your bar as rigid as possible you know to make sure that when you get through and I've got just enough here I set this up the other day and it's actually a boring bar out of a boring head you know I've got a bunch of these you can pick them up on eBay pretty cheap you know I have some of them that I use specifically just for doing this center and I may you know what I want to touch that up a little bit yeah I do I actually want to get a little bit of a sharper edge on this real quick I'm gonna go over here real quick on a grinder and we're gonna touch it up let me grab this one right here dress up a little bit of carbide those are way 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 handy I just want to give it a little fresh edge all right want to be a little above that'll work right there crank that down just a smidgen we'll see how that works should work good all right so we are See if we got any more questions. Nope, not yet. Okay. Let's go in here and do a see where we're at actually. An actual go to 748 is all we need to go to we got a ways to go because we are at let's see here 695 so we're 695 we got a ways to go all right so I'm gonna zoom you guys in here a little bit and we're gonna get started Oh, I'm going to do a little boring action. You guys should be able to see, hopefully. Get in here, looking at the camera. Okay, it's just a little off, but that's the best angle I can get for right now as we start to get with it. Well, actually, I wonder if I can move back that way. Just bear with me here. There we go trying to get sorry I'm trying to get you guys there we go all right 
I don't think I'm touching the machine. Nope. Okay. There we go. Get you guys behind this whole so you can see it. All right. Let's try this. <laughs> if it was going to clear and it's not we're hitting the compound so we're going to really quick we're going to rotate the compound get it out of the way and I don't want to get a real long boring bar in there we'll just go straight to zero that way there are no issues Let's try this again. Well, we're like right there. We are right at the limits. All right. I want to look at the finish on that. I'm trying to. Oh yeah, that'll be a good feed rate. I'm trying to figure out the finish between both of these to get a good, you know. Right. Make sure we don't have any questions. All right, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to post it, and I'll answer it. So that's all I got. The phone running. Instead of wide spray, I want it stream. There we go. There we go.
the thing about if you guys are new to metalworking, WD-40, and you can talk to other people out there, um, is the best, in my opinion, is the best thing for getting a good finish on machining aluminum. Obviously, if you're a hobbyist, you know, you're always looking for the best, least expensive way to do it. You know, there's other stuff out there if you're into the high-end stuff, but for us garage guys, garage warriors, it'll work just fine. Let's get a quick read, just a quick kind of a, where are we at? Throw the left hand calipers in here. That says we're 780. I think we went over. I know we went over. That doesn't make sense. We did. 745. I did. I got busy talking, not paying attention. Well, crap holder. So, I did. I was busy not paying attention and I went over. Yep, sure did. Went way in the hell over. So this is an easy fix. Or at least what I'm going to do to fix it. I don't think I have another slab that size. I may. Let me check. Got to love it. Nope. So what I'm going to do is... Oh, where is... Oh. I do have another hump. <laughs> Alright, this time I'm not going to be talking. Let's grab another hump and get it straight. And we have another hump. That's an easy fix. See? Got busy talking, not paying attention. Live and unedited. Alright. Let's try this again. This time, let's not overbore it. That was a, a oh crap moment, is what that was. But there you go, live and unedited. Right, let's concentrate on what we're doing so we don't do that again. Just had. All right. Let's pay attention to what I'm doing now. Less talking, more doing. take a face cut across here real quick. Let's true this up. Turn this out just now. Let's see. All right, that'll work. Tight. Good. Let's do a feet across.
running about 460 RPM, and feed rate is. smooth flat when I ever I go because of course we're going to be pulling some of this material out so the sides that do end up showing up here I do want them to have a good finish let's pull this out of the way a couple more questions uh, yep that's exactly right Arnold's machine I make mistakes ever try ever try making addo nothing toy I don't I'm glad I'm not. Yep, no, I, uh, <laughs> so there's about a 60 second delay. Yeah, we, you know, we make mistakes. Everyone does. So f for this next little bit, I'm going to really concentrate so that I don't go have a oh shit moment. Yep, live and unedited. So I'm going to go straight through with this 11 sixteenths. And from there, I'm just going to sneak up on and get it bored. I'm going to concentrate this a little bit so you guys just watch because I don't have any more aluminum blanks. So if I screw this one up, I have to go buy some more and I don't want to do that. So for the next little bit, I'm just going to concentrate. You guys go ahead and type questions up there and I'll answer them. So, all right. Anything can happen. All right. Get the pouring bar ready. So let's take a measurement and let's do like I would normally do. All right. This stuff out of the way right here. Kind of sweep some of this down. So I don't have to worry about it getting under the belts. So let's take a measurement. East off is in. And here is ta -da -da. Okay. Take a measurement. We are at six ninety four. Okay, let me just do this how I normally do it. I have my method and I point six nine four is where we at and we want to come to point seven four eight. Okay, and 
I'm just, some people are, you know, human calculators, I am not. And so that I make sure I don't make a mistake. So we're gonna go point 748 minus point 694 equals 54 thou divided by two equals 27 thou. Okay, that's what we need to take off. And then we throw the, that's why I love these calculators. They're built for this. Uh, so 27 thou is what we're shooting for. 0 0.027 off of the total. Okay. So from here we need to take off 27 thou. All right. <clears throat> Everybody has their own little way they do it. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to zero out. Let me take this off so you guys can see the, the DRO. Raise that up so you, if you guys want to open it just a little bit. Let's see, another question, arms machine tool. I have some parts on my wall of oh shit parts. Yep, I have some of those over there too. Um, hey, if you ain't making mistakes, you ain't trying. <laughs> if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it there for those that, if you're, I don't know if the camera will show up on it or not. Got the DRO running, and what I'm gonna do, I'll leave you guys back so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to touch off. Okay, I'm going to call that zero because it's touched right at the edge. I just zero both of them out so I know where we're at. And then I'm going to zero this. Get my analog zero. And so a total of 27 is all we want to pull out, which would get us our total of 54. I'm going to take cuts of 10 first. Get, I forgot to pull the backlash out, so let's try that zero one more time there. All I'm worried about is up here, not I'm worried about the X. We're shooting for 748 thou. We are at 710. Okay.
other questions here. Uh, yeah, they are great calculators. I love these Machinist Pro Calc. Uh, they're 50 to 60 bucks, depending on where you're at. Some people, I mean, they got a lot of good stuff in them, guys. They're really handy. about 731.5 sneaking up on it doing that spring pass. You can get right where you need to be. All right, let's see where we're at. Any other questions? Not yet, okay. Get the WD-40 out. We try, really don't want to measure fluids if we can avoid it. Take one this way. That's where we're at. If you guys can see if the camera will focus, sorry. So we're we are on it and it takes a little bit of knowing your machine if you know what it'll do or you've used it a lot of materials we're right on it so that'll work for what we need we're done with that calculator turn it off i'm gonna come in here and burr this deburr it with a hand tool real quick if it was metal I, or uh, not metal uh steel i'll come in here i've got a chamfer bit you can come in here and just kind of, I want to pull that razor edge, that's all I'm worried about. So now, the next thing I want to do is I want to put the arbor in here. So for those of you that are, let's see, another one. Thank you, I appreciate it. Got it right on the money. So. You can get these online. They have import ones out there. This one's made uh, by Champion, or at least the Mandrel, the internal is. Uh, man, I've got a couple different brands, but they're all, you know, the size. So I've already got this kind of pre-sized here. We're gonna come in here. Drop it down a little bit. See if I can, nah, I'm gonna have to do it like I normally do. Sometimes I can, 
I'll show you how I normally do it. E stop in. Boom. So what I usually do is I'll set this in here and get it pretty much centered. And then I tap it on it. I've got a deal back here. I can just Let me go over to my vise real quick. That way I don't have to worry about messing anything up. We're going to tap it down on the edges. All right. Actually, just a little bit. So what we did was, I went over there and I supported this right here, this little lip on the mandrel, and I tapped this down holding it just like this to drive it into where I wanted it to be. So now, let me blow that out a little bit real quick. turn this back down here. I've got enough meat on here and this is a nice finished side which is fine. Moving them out of those jaws in there. There we go. I've got enough room on the back side here. I can just grab it with a three on the internal because we're going to turn the OD and we're going to face this side. sitting here looking at the back side and I'm not looking at the OD because I know it's not round. So we're just going to do a skim cut and make this nice on the outside because we're almost at the OD where we need to be and we're just going to use this here. Get in here with it. Might have to. I don't know. Can we get to it? We're going to go Should be able to get right there, pretty dang close. Dress it up, that should, oh yeah. I tried to bite too much. Man, I hope that didn't jack up my bore. Lovely, lovely. Well, I want to tighten that up. I've had this happen before. I tried to take too much of a deep cut and we spun this on this. Not good. Where is my little hammer? It is over here. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Just tap that a little bit. Alright, let's try this again.
So let's not take such a, let's try to take about 15 down. So we got another question. Uh, need to get some of those. Some of those, what were you talking about, Arnold? I guess I missed it. So I've got some junky fought or older ones here that I use on aluminum only. have to be a pretty file I mean this one's been cleaned up and you know but you don't want one real fine because it will plug up real easy all right we got that sharp edge off now I'm gonna use this tool and come in here and I'm just gonna just straighten this up get everything running too close and hit my tool so let's see yeah you gotta be careful that's one thing about I mean there's a bunch of different ways you could do this we could transfer this and make another arbor where we can lock it down but we just want to be and I and I may end up doing that because I don't want to mess this up um, as you guys saw earlier if you try to get taking a too heavy cut and when we go in here to make the groove that's a possibility see I got some questions here let me slide over here um, Yep, yep. Oh, the mandrels, yes. The mandrels are very, very handy. So what I may do, now that I've got, you know, face, face, bore, everything is concentric, quote unquote, you know, external, internal, 
the faces. It all looks nice and pretty. We are going to be doing some heavy cuts. I know that that'll spin just from, I mean, I tried to take a, a 15 thousandths cut and it spun. We don't want that to happen. So what I'm probably going to do is let's make a mandrel real quick that we can like suck this down on so I don't have to worry about anything spinning. E-brake is in. Let's take this out. Okay. Alright. Looks nice and pretty. And I went really, really close down to the tool. Now, that'll probably end up being the side that is <clears throat> where you put the, we'll probably mount the puller or the puller grooves when you have to have a puller to install and all on that side. That'll be the front. Alright, let me blow the junk out of this real quick. And let's take this apart real quick. So that we can mount on the other one. got some material here and it's almost you know it's big obviously there but this side ta-da so we're gonna chuck this up I'm gonna that ends been looks like an angry beaver got a hold of it so we're gonna use this chunk here let's throw it in here this will work for what we need what I'm gonna do real quick I'm gonna flip them jaws how they were a while ago because we're not going to be grabbing the outside of anything for a while. So let's switch those out. Let me throw this in low hand. Reverse procedure. Grab the breaker bar. And no, if you're just joining, these are not like wrenched down super tight. I like using these and I have the torque set on this little impact so it can't over torque things. I did it that way on purpose so I couldn't accidentally strip out anything with regards to so I've got this set so I cannot I've got it set here where it will not over tighten or break or stretch, which is just a little Harbor Freight deal. I just want it to, you know, zip stuff in and out. I've got bigger impacts if I need to do that. And over tightening the studs on the chuck is not one of them that I want to do. I've got, you can see there, it's, I didn't loosen that one apparently. And these are 8 mil, 8 mil Allen. And I purposely did that because that was one thing I took into consideration. Here we go. Is I never want this little quarter inch, or this little 3 8 impact to ever be able to mess anything up. On purpose. Flip it. There's not a lot of jump, but we want to make sure. Yeah, we need to blow out. So grab this, take that off, set that over there.
denatured alcohol works great for getting off the, the oil and the small particles and stuff. And it won't mess up your... You know, it's like putting hand sanitizer on. And it won't mess up the finish or it won't mess up stickers or whatever or any graphics you have on something. a little bit. Having a little piece of material under your jaws can screw your day up. Just like talking on YouTube and over boring a hole. Spin start them. That way I know they won't get cross threaded. Then we'll come back here, we'll just do a little kind of a mini. I mean you could put a you could set and figure out and find out, okay, what's the torque value of blah, blah, blah. I'm just giving a little kind of a, okay, if the jaw moves tight enough, it's tight. Just a little. That's it. That way I know they're tight. Nothing over torqued. Didn't try to reach down too hard. We're going to grab our material here. And we're going to dress. Well, first off, I'm going to get this in because it's like hacked funny or whatever. I'm going to dress it up, put it down, and we'll see where we're at. Actually, I'm going to grab a different center real quick. Another center cutter, starter bit, whatever you want to call it. There we go. And I think number four here, whatever. Yeah. Come here, drill a 
me dress the end of that off because it's kind of flared. Actually, I'm just going to come in here and use a file real quick. three-quarter material but we all know when it's made it's not exactly three-quarter and that's what I want I want that sucker nice and tight let's see where we're at here yeah we're a couple thou over which is fine I may want to I don't know, I may want to use a bigger piece of material. Let me see if I've got a larger piece. That's that's too close. That's only a couple thou, and I want to have more meat behind it than that. Let me go over here to my... Any questions? Mandrels, oh, going to order a set of five to one. Next week from Drill Hog. So, just out of curiosity, uh, there, Aunt Arnold, Arnold's machine. I just saw your comment. Um, you can which they've got them. You can uh, email drillhog at gmail.com and they have they're in they're, they travel in six or 30 seconds is what they, I say travel. Got them in 30 seconds. So what I did was take this off for a moment. So what I did was WD-40 flying everywhere. I'll show you guys here. That's why I like doing the live stuff. All right. So what I did was uh, I bought the standard, you know, and it comes in a Hoet box, you know, from one to, and they're the M7 is what I got, and they go from the 9 16 to 1 inch. Okay. Matter of fact, the 11 16 we need to put it in here. Handy as I'll get out. Denatured alcohol in this one, which that's why I have this one. Get the oil off and then just kind of a wipe down, you know, get the big gunk. Throw that back in here. Okay. Now, if you already have a good set of bits that are from like, you know, 9 16 to 1. You can order just the 30 second sizes, okay? Same box, even though it says 9 16 to 1 by 16, I actually labeled it 30 seconds. And they're all actually 30 seconds. Again, they're M7, and they go from 7 16 to, or correction, they go from 17 30 seconds to 31 30 seconds is the largest. And that's a set of, uh, Eight. So between the the 30 seconds and that for a drill bit, you're going to be fine. If you have to get in between those, then you do like what we did. Some guys think I've got to have every 16th, 64th size, whatever. Honestly, a drill bit is only going to drill not even a really round hole accurately that's when you get into like what we were doing we're boring two size but for your oversizes for uh, through holes or drill and tap sizes that'll cover what you need all right and I've got to get stuff off my glasses real quick but before I grab my glass cleaning stuff I'm gonna grab my hand cleaner ain't no sense in grabbing your glasses rag and you got oil all over your hands Yep, the 30 second sizes are great to have, which someone tried to call, sure enough. 
I'm gonna have to get the battery charger for my phone. So it doesn't die because it's down to like 30%. I started this at like 50%. Get this clean real quick and I'll do that. Actually, I'll have to run inside and grab my cord charger really quick because it's one of the new Samsung phones. Let me do that. Let me go grab the charger really, really quick so that I can keep my phone running. I'll be right back. show you guys my my mess my charger mess up here so I want to use this one I'll just pull it out because that goes to the other thing plug that in And let's charge the phone. That'll be a good thing. There we go. And the phone is charging. Yay. Let's see who tried to call. Huh. Lovely. Alright. So there we go. I'm going to leave the phone like that. Ta-da. Trying to find a good resting spot for it. There we go, that'll work. Actually, I need to set it up. Let me get the phone holder for this thing real quick. That way, everything is like I want it to be. All these little things you learn when you get ready to do your videos live and unedited. Grab the phone holder over here. Things that make the world easier. A little phone holder that I always use when I use my live stuff. I'll mount it in it real quick. That way, all right, phone holder mounted. Now I can see you guys' comments and respond accordingly. All right, so I'm going to set this here. That way I can see what's going on. All right, real quick like, which I'm going to be over there digging real quick. I'm going to have you guys look in here at the lathe. I'm going to walk over grab some material because that is just that's not going to be big enough might as well take it out well if anything we got that end straightened up all right let me go grab i've got a piece over here specifically for these grab it real quick i used to have an arbor set up for doing that and ever since i moved i'm still trying to find things like a place This will work. Here is some, um, what is this? Seven eighths. There we go. That'll give us enough backing between the three quarter hole. So I've got some seven eighths, 4140. All right. This is some oddball, whatever, whatever here. So I'm sure that's way smaller than, let's see where we're at. Oh yeah, that's definitely under. That's under. Yep, eight seven five. All right, so that'll give us enough shoulder. You can see there. So we're actually going to flip this end around. <clears throat> Slide all this in. I'll just use this end and make it on this side. Start here. Dress the end up. Actually. Well, I want to get all that off first. <sighs> Let's see, because I don't want that on there like that. Let's just do this. Easy 
old junky file. There, we got all the, the labeling off out of the way. There we go. That'll work. Slide this in, dress the end up, which actually, this ain't gonna have to stick out very far. All right, let's get all the aluminum stuff off of this. Now I'm gonna leave this sitting out here like this the way it is because I know here in a little bit I'm gonna have to work on the outside of this. Uh, hate to leave, good man, long day. That's your work, no problem. Thanks, Arnold, appreciate it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna come in here and dress this up. Center set up here to cut for that. Kind of leave you guys at that angle so you can see everything that I'm doing here. Seventy-five, yeah, a seventy-two, a seventy-one. So it's seven eighths ish, is what I call it. <clears throat> Zoom you guys up here so you can get a better view whoop, of what I am doing. Let's see. That's a crappy view from that side. Let me back you up over here just a little bit. That way, there you go. Now you guys will be able to see what I'm doing there. We're gonna come in here, turn this down to right at the diameter of this, okay? Which is the 748,000, slide that on, and then we're gonna thread and nut so we can make, uh, it's going to be a three-quarter, 16, or, you know, whatever it is. enough room plus room for the nut okay all right just checking
Got about 100,000 to take off. I'm going to go with this actually. I'm going to speed up to 755 because I know that insert. 755 and a slower feed rate gives a really good finish. <laughs> chips. Grab my pliers from over here real quick guys and gals. Any other question? Uh, wish my tail today easy to move. Yeah, boy I tell you what, it took me uh, a little trial and error to get it to where it, it was smooth like that. I had to work at it. All right. I'm gonna set these back here. Let's see where we're at. 830. Okay, we gotta be 750 right at and we'll start miking it once we get down pretty close. <laughs> do is I'll widen this open and you guys can see you know so if you're doing this I'll show you guys you can see how far back I get or I step to the side whenever it starts making that long whenever it starts making this and it does that when you start making that stuff which is not what you want but you know you want to make you stand back and you let it fling away you stand to the side don't ever stand right here all the time doing that because boy you'll talk about getting a you know in a mess in a hurry you'll do it it was six all right so i can get my tool in here a little better angle i'm gonna go like that there we go disengage a half nut and back that sucker out so if it is making a big mess or whatever finish and I try not to drag 775 775 if that camera will pick it up that's where we're at make sure we got any other questions here turn this that is simply large no huge very heavy oh I get it so you've probably got like one of those giant a bomb 79 style hell stocks I get it so we're 770, we've got 25 thou to go. Make those little small cuts, because once it 
it comes off, you can't put it back. lesson many moons ago. Don't dial in exactly what you think you need to have because if you do, well, people get lucky once in a while. Me, I've learned my lesson. Sneak up on it. This is, you know, once it comes off or out, as the case was earlier, you know, you cannot put it back. So we are 766. I need to demag those. doing because I don't think I have one handy we're probably gonna make our own nut for this thing okay I'll just check the comments here and Mike is where are we at oh wow 754 so we're just almost there 753 54 54. Probably need to adjust this just a smidgen, perhaps. But. Set it up there. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to work this down with a file to get it to fit. Mikey like it. Does Mikey like it? 47, 48, 48, 48, 47 right here at the tip, which is fine because that's where threads are going to be. So Mikey like that. All right, let's see how we're going to fit. Any other questions here? Uh, 18 by 48. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's see how well this is going to fit here. And that is like, because that spun on there, that's kind of boogered at one spot right there. I think. Well, I think I know. That. 
Let me try this again. Get all that little edge. And if all it is is just a little, yeah, that's like right. That's fine. So let's work this down just a smidgen. And it's a little warm, so it'll shrink a little bit. Switch it over to a smooth middle file. That's just like right. I think there's a a booger inside the the bore on this. It's just almost fitting. Yeah, it's just like right there. So we'll just take a little more down off the shaft, which I'd rather deal with that than having a oh no, I took too much. No, I don't want to. Back to our bastard, our little bastard here. Less used part. Pretty good bite. I need to get me some new files. I've been putting it off. Oh, there we go. We're getting there. It's just like right. it, turn it around, there's an area inside here that's not, that's what it is, there's an area, and I can barely feel it, there's an area inside here, let's see, let uh, that would be nice to have a big and like that, mine's saying, James, yep, yeah, I know the deal, so there's a little area in here that's just, uh, that's where it's catching on. That diameter is fine. There's a small area in here and I'm going to try something. I've got a hand scraper that I'm going to try. <clears throat> Let's see here. That's where a good old fashioned hand scraper comes in here. And I've got several right here just for that purpose. So we're going to do the old-fashioned. Since it's aluminum, we are get over here where I can kind of get a gander at kind of like doing scraping on the bearing. 
just a little spot all the way around inside there. Because mm -hmm. I want this sucker to be nice and tight and perfect. I want nothing to move. I could run a reamer in there and mess with all that, but I don't want to take that much time. I mean, I want it to be right, but okay. All right. I can see where it's hitting at in there. Again, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? Isn't that the old saying? I don't know why it did that. I guess that there was an area in there that the boring bar just kind of flexed a little bit or whatever. I'm not sure. Well, when it spun, it probably... But I don't see any area where it raised up the material. 100 years old. Cool. Sitting there reading the comments. Neat stuff. Just so you guys know, whenever uh, this turns into a live video, all these comments here go away. Just so you know. I'm sitting here, kind of getting the. Just a little bit. I don't want to mount this back up and try to bore it. And there's just one little spot in there where it's all the way around where it's hanging. Shows you where scraping tools are still handy even in today. Oh, yeah, we're like right there. It's. Right there. What you don't want to do is you don't want to get this too loose to where it won't or to where it'll just slide onto the pulley. That you don't want to do and see because we're going to end up pressing this on. This is that pump shaft. And so, we definitely still have our, our press fit. There's just a little area in here where it's just not wanting to go on. It's right in the middle. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Again, I may take just a little off this just to get it. Yeah, because I don't want to. I don't want to make this any bigger on here, but I know I've got that area where it needs to be. So let's take a little bit more off this. clean up a little bit from here back. Get down to the nut cutting right there.
almost, I've got about a half inch on the back here. like a and I'm fine with that we're that'll hold it to where we need to do the belt which is not a super super tight critical just in from the shop Stephen Lang okay cool 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 just really, really handy and I've got some digger top or digger up yeah I've got adjustable reamers but I didn't want to get the diameter too big because on this pulley here if you're just joining us um, we're making a power steering pump pulley the reason is all the other ones locally uh, are bent just like that you know they're chowdered up uh, the dumbass got a hold of whoever all the others in the wrecking yard this one was dropped or bent or whatever but the other ones we looked at uh, this earlier this week when I went with my buddy they were all either bent like this from someone getting carried away with a pry bar or they were bent you know, I mean literally I'm holding that one straight and you can see it's like you know anyway so we didn't want to mess with getting the bore too big for the press fit if you ever had you know this is the shaft out of the power string pump yes I'm rebuilding it we had to put a that sleeve in there as well so I didn't want to get the bore too big on this Taking this down is fine. Getting this too big, no good. So now we are three quarter, so let me go see. I'd really like you to slap a die on there real quick. And my dies are behind me. So instead of trying to see the point, we'll just slap a die on it real quick. Let me see, and I know I'm gonna have to make, I know, I know, I know, I'm going to have to make a nut for this. So let me grab some hex bar real quick guys and gals Okay And matter of fact if you guys want to peek at me, I'll show you where I go dig for my hex bar and stuff over here And my caps are over here So three quarters Get This out of the way happens. 
but we got it. Again, live and unedited. All right, so let's see if we got any other questions. Uh, uh, let's see, the shop, when I had an automotive shop, we made pulleys frequently. Yep, cool, cool, cool. Okay, we found our hex stock that we're going to make. We're gonna do three quarter 10 and let's see. I've got a die, three quarter 10. Let's slide this off because rather than single point, I'll just slap a die on it and cut it real quick and be done. There's a really nice, good uh, RN three quarter, you know, taper tap. Good quality. Used a couple times, so I know it's good. Grab our die, three quarter ten, which I've got them separated back here. Grab a die. That's the book. Three quarter ten, right there. All right, let me rinse that out real quick. Denatured alcohol. Just to get the gook out of those corners. There we go. Blow it out. Good old three quarter tin die. Grab the die handle, which should be. It's in the bottom drawer. And there it is. Bingo. Two inch. I need that a little bit. So let's set this up here. Make sure I get it started. This is the start side. So put in a two inch die handle. Because I'm just going to do this quick, down and dirty with a die. Die, down and dirty, down and dirty die. There you go. All right, make sure we just have the one lock point. I'll just face it up. And we're going to actually go on, okay. There we go, and our so it doesn't spin is the one on top. Those we just kind of push it against the side. We're not doing any adjusting because it's got an adjusting screw. That shouldn't go anywhere. We'll just give a little simple snug. I love snug. Okay. Now what I'm about to do may piss some people off, but oh well. They'll get over it. That's funny, I get those comments on social media. If you would have ever done that in my shop, I would have fired you, or my, you know. I get it, guys, I really do, trust me. Everybody has their own method. So, the way I do it, and I'm just gonna do a quick die cut, and we only have to go down, you know, the depth of die or a little further past, is I'm gonna come up here, and we're making sure that nothing's gonna hit, which we know. And actually, I'm gonna cut a start on that real quick. Um, this is one of those times where I wanna hurry up and get it done. We could spend, let me scoot the camera in. We could spend a lot of time, single point, nice and pretty, but I just, I wanna hurry up and get this thing done. And this is gonna be a tool. So this is, there's gonna be lots of in and out. So what I need to do is come up here and cut a, a chamfer real quick. And of course, it never fails. That insert, oh, let's try it. Get the sticky, that was on flood coolant last time. That's the nice thing about the denatured alcohol. This flood coolant that I use, uh, it cleans it right off. Okay, there, let's blow that off. And it doesn't jack your hands up. Because again, denatured alcohol, it's kind of like using uh, hand sanitizer. We're just going to put a good start chamfer on it.
fancy now before I forget let's slap her down in low 70 rpm and when I cut with the die this is a trick maybe I don't know if you know this Larry since you're watching um, your shop do it your way I agree so I'm gonna slide out here real quick so Larry or any of you other guys and gals if you have this similar lathe this is something that I like about it. You've got the bump button, so as long as you hold it in, it's going to turn. Now, it's only going to turn counterclockwise, or it's only going to turn toward you. So, there's no reverse, whatever, whatever. It's, it's bump. It's for doing, you know, you want to bump something around or doing what I'm fixing to do. I like it for this reason right here. So, we're going to slide it up here. Get my oil ready, get my tap panel ready. Let's get some oil in here and we'll show you. Oh, well, I'll just leave you back there. I want you guys to see everything. Get a little oil all the way around, a little oil on there, and we're just going to come up here. Now, almost forgot. Almost, the trick to help and start this sucker straight, let me show you real quick. Whoop. Lock it. So, let me show you real a little trick I learned a long time ago. Okay, all you need is something just to press on the back. But press it straight. Okay. And then what I do is I push my jaws all the way in. Okay, so I've got this big round area that's pressing flat and square. I mean, you know, you could use, I just, I back the, the jaws all the way in the chuck. Okay, so that way, when we come up here, you lock it, okay, lock it, we get just a little pressure, and that's the way we're starting even. And so all we're going to do now, we're going to get our oil ready, and we're going to bump. Okay, that's as far as I want to go. So, you see how easy that worked? you're not off kilter you're not crazy you know and then you got to be careful when you're going back you don't want to hit your cover for your dro so you'll just start it there and i back it up a little bit and then i'll use this handle here i'll just go like this and there you're loose okay so at that point i put my uh e-brake in or the e the kill switch i'll throw it into neutral and then I'll just roll it back by hand, real gentle like. All you have to do is get that broke loose. Okay. I mean, you could, but if something were to happen, that thing were to catch, it's not pretty. Ask me how I know. It's a lesson I learned. So we're, we're good. We got it cut out. We'll blow this, blow this stuff out here. Blow that off. Okay, hopefully that little tip right there, guys and gals, has helped you use the bump button. That's what a good use for the bump button is on the lathe, if it has it. Now these are sharp threads. I'm going to come in and just touch them, just so they're not so stinking sharp. Okay, real quick, let's get this out of the way, down here. Alright, and we're going to... Throw it into high, we're going to do 460. We're just getting the razor's edge off, that's all we want. A little denatured alcohol helps get the, uh, oh yeah. Beautiful. So we're going to do a test fit real quick. Make sure I like what I see. I may have to... Oh, it boogered right... Yep. It raised that up right there. That's why I always test it.
perfect. Now we need to cut our nut, make one. We're going to cut a nut. Okay, we'll leave that in there. Now I'm going to leave that on there for right now. I'll cut it off after a while and dress up the other end so I got a good arbor for that particular size because I don't have one. That's why we're making one. Now, um, I may need to cut off a hunk of this. This is too long. And, and yeah. Because I only have one and nine sixteenths. So I'm going to cut a chunk off of this real quick, which I have the bandsaw right behind me. Ta da! Which is handy. Okay. We're going to move some stuff real quick. Set that right there. Move this out of the way. Put that in the floor. Get rid of that over there. The joys of having a nice tight shop. Alright, so I'm going to cut some of this off first. off a piece real quick. Doesn't matter which end. That'll work. All right. And we're gonna plug the saw in because it's of course not plugged in. Happy, happy, joy, joy. But, like I said, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? Alright, there we Questions over here. Uh... <laughs> yep. Good speed, I don't want to add more to it. You get carried away and it'll stall out. It's cut good. Let it cut. No, I haven't 
Stephen Lang. I haven't had a chance to look for him. I honestly forgot. I apologize. Thank you for reminding me. Done through. All right, John. My buddy John's watching. Yeah, we are going to make it smaller, John. But before we do, uh, I wanted to. Which I'm answering your question here. A buddy of mine texted me. Uh, let me get back over here on this. Um, boom. Where it is. And back to chat. So yes, I apologize, uh, Stephen. I forgot all about those. I will look tomorrow, I promise you. Um, we are gonna make this smaller, believe it or not, John. Let me plug my thing back in here to charge my phone. Um, we will make it smaller. But I needed to build this, uh, let me get this up, sorry guys. I needed to get, make this arbor. We are gonna turn this down to a smaller diameter. Uh, the reason my buddy John got a hold of me was, we're going to square that up. We are going to make it smaller. We're not going to make it the exact same size. So before I start turning off the diameter, which I know John's watching the live feed, uh, before I turn off of the diameter, the outside, I wanted to make this and uh, we will definitely make it smaller. Um, so his thing is, you make it smaller, you don't rob as much horsepower, you know, and we're going to figure out, we can always make this smaller, but before I started doing any of this external grinding cut or machining, we have to build this, um, so that way we're not um, slipping on that other arbor. We are going to make it smaller. I didn't forget about that. I promised John. So let's slow this in here. We're going to just dress up the ends. All right. And let me get you guys focused back in here. Let me move you around to the end of the lathe. And there you go. Zip you guys in a little bit. Boom. All right. Let me clean some of this gook off of here. Some of this at times. There we go. All right, that'll work. Okay. All right. We're gonna go back to this. Cool. Boom, boom. facing tool for that facing. Actually, let's try 
Let me switch over to this one real quick. That'll get the angle that I want. There we go, that'll work. And we're gonna flip real quick. Go back to our other facing tool. Face the other side down. Flip it real quick. And then from here, we're gonna bore it out and tap it. Going to be the side we're going to up against the part, and then we're going to come in here with this, get a chunk from the nut. Beautiful. All right. All right. Back that away. And we're going to. Uh, here. You guys having fun so far? I think I missed some questions here. Uh, uh, you're trying to uh, Harold's place, Tatmatic, no problem. Think about making an adapter, use my ER11 collets. You know what? Uh, Steven, let me back this out. I would honestly make an adapter to use your ER11 collets is what you said here. Uh, ER40, anyone know if ER40 is good, is better 32? It's size. Size is what it is, Larry. Uh, there's no better difference than like 11, or those are actually the sizes. So ER32 is really, really, really common. As a matter of fact, if your bridge port has a, uh, R, or if your bridge port has a R8, uh, R8 style uh, drawbar collet set up, I have an adapter on mine that is ER R8 to ER32. I put my collets in it. I love the thing. Uh, I think I paid about like 60 bucks for it from Bolton Tools out in California, and I love it. Because a lot of times what I'll do instead of running my R8 stuff, if I'm going to do a lot of switching between drilling and tapping, you guys saw, uh, or I think I've showed it in the past, but I'll leave my R8 to ER32 collet adapter in there, and if I'm doing drilling and tapping, because you're going different sizes from a drill to a tap, the collet is the bomb diggity way to go. Um, I would do that. Let's see, see, my from this question. Da -da -da -da. Really tall, and yep, yeah. Go to the go to the ER32 collet setup. It's really really handy. Um, get some sort of. In action, the old lantern post drives me nuts. Yeah, it does dig her up. The old, uh, the old lantern style can be trying and taxing. So, to answer those questions, and I'm going to show you guys right there real quick. We're going to drill a hole so we can tap this. So I'm going to tighten this real quick. But before we get started doing that, E-stop is in. I am going to grab a soda real quick. Or not a soda, but something to drink. Get my air hose off the floor here. Get my hands clean. So yeah, talking gives you cotton mouth. These things say on running water down the sink, especially if you guys have a, a shop 
a man cave and it doesn't have a wash sink or you don't have to worry about going to the house and getting the inside house all greasy, nasty, dirty. These wipes are really, really handy for that. I like them. Okay. Step around this mess. We're going to grab iced tea. thing. Alright. Before I do this, okay, we are drilling three quarter ten or tapping. Twenty one thirty seconds is the drill size we need. Let me set this over here. That happens to be a bit in my 30 seconds set that I have here. What was it? Uh, I brushed a chihuahua. 21 30 seconds. Alright, and we are 19 and should be 21 30 seconds. All right, so we got that ready. We have the tap. That is I had the tap. Where did I set it? Welcome to my life. drilling. going to use flood coolant and I'm going to drill a lot slower than that I'm going to drill at 115 rpm let's go to low that's another thing jog is to make sure you're in the gear you need to be in handy 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 oh, let's see good question okay I didn't know if there was more range with no not really I mean if you want to go up they do have larger sizes but you know I would stick with ER32 Larry honestly they're really common I mean so is ER40 but you know, I mean you can look at price look sitting here looking at my yep you can look at price on them and see Gonna go in here real slow. Let's get our flood coolant going first. And run it for a little bit, make sure we're going good. And what I want to do is come up here and go lock it in. Ready. Don't need quite that much. And we're going to drill at 115 RPM. And I'm just going to hand feed it. Oh. It might help. Oh. 
There we go. I thought I had that tight. Maybe it was a dream. Could have been. Oh, here's another little trick. So, you see how the flood coolant flops around over there? So I have a piece of metal. And it works perfect because you're not moving the carriage. You can rest it right there or stand it up. I've kind of hacked into position and it'll, that coolant, instead of flopping on the floor because we're not spinning real fast, we'll throw it back down. Again, the carriage isn't moving, so you throw it in the travel wheel on the carriage and right there and you're good to go. And you can still hit the e-stop button. That way you don't end up with a bunch of flood coolant in the floor. That's a handy little trick. about how fast I'm feeding. And you can feel the bit. You don't want to try to feed it too fast. that bit cool. wondering what the heck my part was pushing back in the jaws so obviously I didn't have it as tight as I should have so you're wondering what in the heck I thought I should have already been through that by now I looked up and went oh but I'm sure I'm not the only person that's ever done that put a snag on every one of kind of I was like, why in the world does keep looking at that? There you go. Let's try that again.
All right, see if we got any more questions so far. Uh, all right, nope, none yet. All right, cool, cool, cool. Got that out, dry that off real quick. That away. All right, put this away so it doesn't walk off. I have this thing about when I put the big bits back on it. As soon as I'm done with them, that way it's, they don't get lost or anything. All right, so now we're gonna tap. And are we big enough? No, we're not. Okay, so tap follower is the next thing. <clears throat> we're gonna slap a tap follower in here. Okay, let me grab a tap handle, pull this out of the way. Grab said tap handle. <sighs> Let's see. Nope. Let's use the old uh, Morse number 14. Will it fit that? Yep. So we have a Morse number 14. Set that down there. Get started. Tailstock up here. Same thing. Just like what we did with the die. Locked in. Getting started. Bump handle. We are at 70 RPM. And oil. Cutting oil. Going to bump through all of this. Get it started, you got it. Get oil. This is almost about because you got to keep this going at the back. That's the trick to it. Okay, you go. And you could run flood coolant and do it, but I like tapping with oil. Keep your tail stock up. We're all through. We're all the way through. And then what I do is get the oil out of the way. Come up here. Before you reverse, blow your chips out. Okay, all the chips are out. Now I'm going to slowly bump in reverse with. Okay. Loosen that so it'll push back. Sticky crap off. These taps aren't cheap. So I keep them clean. Nice thing about New Mexico, um, it's not real humid here, and I always like to put that stuff back on if I can. Alright, so tap follower out. Now I need to come in here and just kind of dress the edges of that. What we can do, since that's large, I have a large. Is it here or is it over on the side? I think it's this one. That one right there will work because we're just going to do it real quick. Pull the, the deburr it a little bit. Just barely. Lock in. And all we're deburring is just that initial lead in. Now there's a little right on the outside, but I'll clean that up with something else. Same thing, we're going to flip this. Yeah, I'm going to 
get my other deal real quick. Get this cutting wall off here. Make sure it's Oh yeah, that rust on the outside is really holding the oil. I'm going to dress this really, really quick. I'm going to spin the camera and show you guys what I'm doing, because that's where I'm fixing to go. I'm going to clean up the outside of this real quick light to get the rust crap off of it. Because it is a tool and I do want it to look nice. And I need my face shield. And it is... I just set it down. Am I the only person that loses something as soon as you said? Oh, here it is, right here. Uh, walk right past it. Okay. See if we got any other questions. Uh, no, not yet. All right. Ice tea break. Again, you guys, this is like the second time I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm sitting here watching the video. Yep. Okay. This is the second time I've used. This is the camera that I've shot all my videos with, with the exception of when I told you I was using my phone. So I figured out how to get all the stuff off compared to the other night, which Hey, a learning experience. Uh, so yeah, we just took, and you guys saw the rust. I just wanted the rust off of it. Um, honestly, when I get done, I'll probably cold blue this. And you see you have all the thread gunk, the gunk in there. Denatured alcohol is your friend. Okay, because it was, that oil wasn't coming out of the rust. Denatured alcohol, blow it out. There we go. Make sure. Some of this is just not wanting to come out. I don't know why. It's that sticky, nasty, that rust. Usually I take that rust up before I start because I've used this stuff before. There we go. All right. Now the acid test. How well does it fit? Purdy, nice and purdy. So this will work for what we need. And both sides are nice enough, they're not gonna scar that up. So, real quick, okay. Before I get started, I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna do a quick kind of clean up, get some of this flood coolant off real quick. This involves there it is. Looking for the face shield.
And before I shut down for the night, I will uh, pump oil into underneath the, the felts and everything. So I'll do that. I've showed that before. Get this out of the way. stuff so I'm going to start up stand to the side let's put it in high gear off out of the way. All right, take this off. Sit there. Now, I'm going to put our, which I'll cut this off later. You know, I'll just take and hack this off later on the bandsaw. I'll just, actually, you know what? Let's do that real quick. That way I don't have something flopping around in there, throwing it off balance. So, advantage of having the bandsaw right behind you. So that down, we'll just cut this off right now and be done with it. That way you don't have something flopping around there making your tolerances off, which you can do it. Dress this up. Let's see. On your tail stock brake handle. What caliber is it? <laughs> it's actually a Browning. It's a shift knob. It's not any particular caliber. It's uh, just I put it on there specifically for a conversation piece. So yeah, it's actually a Browning, you know, Browning firearm shift knob, whatever. That's all it is. It's not a real fire. It's not a real uh, piece of ammunition. It's not real munitions. So I'm gonna clean this up real quick, get all this gunk off. That way it's a nice smooth. And I'm being very, 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 well actually, let me dress the back of this up here. Real quick like.
Wind's getting with it out there, that's for sure. sticky glue off so there wasn't any issue of it not registering correctly. it real quick. What size is it? It's an all 16s. That's what size it is. It's an all 16s. I didn't have a nice crescent all 16s. Crystal away. Big old crystal. US made. There. Now, that's going to help us do the majority of what we need to do. Now, we will, before we get carried away, because we know we have to make. <coughs> this register here, and I know that's way too big, obviously. You know, we can't machine that, which is fine. But that is the big mandrel we're gonna use to hold it down. I do need to make probably a smaller nut maybe or something, but I'm gonna machine this down the outside of, and we're gonna get it smaller. Now, before we do the final um, machining of the groove, I'm gonna take off material here quite a bit. I've gotta do a lot of facing, and I'm gonna make this smaller. So that's why I'm gonna leave this on here. Once I get down to, I will then flip my jaws because this will be a smaller diameter, significantly smaller. Um, and I'm gonna do this machining here. Now the last thing I go, once I get all this cut so that the polar grooves will be on there. What did I mark now? Oh, my WD-40. Um, then I will switch over, uh, after I do that, I'll switch over, or when I get ready to do that part and finish up, I'll switch over, grab it on the outside, get that done, finish that, put it back on this mandrel, and then I'll finish machining the groove, the V-groove, okay? And I'm going to make a form tool for that. Whether we do that tonight, I don't know, or not how long have we been running. Uh, let's see, it'll show. Yeah, I don't know how long it's been running. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Do you have a metric crescent too? I do. I have a metric crescent. I have an imperial crescent. And I have a Whitworth crescent. That's a joke, guys. For those of you, let's see. Uh, my father shifter on the old D runner because the wife kept taking off with it. There you go. That'll work too. So. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna take down the uh, diameter and then we'll start working on the width. So this only has to be, and these are rough measurements, okay, so we only have to be like 650 thou. We'll do like, you know, yeah, 655, 650. We'll make it like, uh, let's just make it 660. 660 thou total width, and I have a lot to take off. So let's actually do this. 
just so that, well, let's put it on 660. I mean, because there's a bunch of ways to do this. Or 670, I'm sorry. 670 thou. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. We want to get out our blue sharpie. Okay. Show you a quick trick. Okay. All right. So we're just going to from the edge. We got to take it down that much, and I'm just going to make a mark here. So that I know. Actually, it might help if I stand it up straight. Here we go. And that's just approximate. All right. So now we know we need to come down to that size, and we're going to use this. And I'll zoom you guys in here shortly. And we have lots of metal cutting to do. Let me get back into high. Flap it down. Out. We have a lot to take off. Ooh. See, I played this game a while ago. Okay, first I'm going to take off. Mark the OD. And black shield on. Gonna need it for this, that's for sure. Wow. You know what? I need to try I just realized something. I just realized it. The outside of this material on this shaft is uh forged round. This piece ain't turning around. I need I almost forgot. Uh, as soon as I spun it, I went, wait a minute. I need to turn that because it's a mill finish and it's not cylindrical. It needs to be cylindrical. Even if we turn just a couple thou, it's mill finish and it's not square with the rest of it. So that's square. Let's do a little cut here and get this sucker square.
just a smidgen. All right, I'm going to true that up with that. Now everything's true again. Now that that's true, now I'm going to put this on. That should get us where we need to be. All right. Now we need to put a center on this sucker to hold it straight to support everything. Let's see, any questions? Da, 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 da. Uh, 225 minute. Just letting you know we've been watching from start 12:30. Cool. All right. Now we're gonna get back over here. Making sure everything is like it's supposed to. Alright, I should be able to get nice and tight. Let's see how it balances. Dress it up a little bit.
certain point, it'll actually spit smoke if what you want. You just have to get past that point.
some people are probably cringing. What are you using? So I've actually got a chip hook here. Trying to keep the big stuff from slinging around like crazy. Hook some of this other stuff down there. Someone needs to invent an aluminum magnet. They'll be a gazillionaire. I know there's things out there that do that, like a static wand and stuff. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. Let's see if we got any whoop, questions here. Take a momentary break. Squeeze out here. Let the uh, air clear out. Had to open up the garage door. Questions. Uh, da, 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 handle. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna take this off for a second. I'm gonna take a breather. Take a break because we're almost down to the width that we need to be and we'll answer questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, it works, looks cool, tail stock, yep. Do you have a metric crescent? Yeah, I answered that. Uh, tag, da, 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 da. Make her grunt, go for it. Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, you can hear it when you go into that deep cut. I was probably doing 20, 30,000 depth. I don't want to go too crazy because when you get higher RPM, you have to take lighter cuts. So we've got just a little bit left, probably one more cut. And on that one, I'm going to slow it down. And we're going to set up. And then we'll do, we don't end up doing one cut on the back. I'm going to flip this thing because nice and hot, 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 hot. All right. Okay, we'll get in there. We'll zoom back in. And this will be the last cut, and I'm going to run it at a slow feed rate, one and a half thou to two thou per rev per one and a half to two thou per revolution. All right, face shield back on. And here we go. That is what you don't want to happen. So that feed rate is too slow. And it won't make a chip. You break in, slide it back out. I thought maybe I'd slow down for that last one, but nope, too slow. Take all this out. All right, we're going to stick with what we had before. It was working. If it's working, don't mess with it. stuff back out of the way here. All right. Oh, 
All right. Cool. Nice. Now I'm going to break that edge real quick. With this. and warm. We're going to have to make a form tool, or I would like to actually, to make a form tool at a high speed steel and I'll probably do that. Probably not tonight, but uh, I mean we could go in here and hand shape it with a uh, parting tool to begin with. I mean when you think about it, but that's kind of what I want to do is make a, is I'll grind one up similar to like this. You know, We'll get us a wide tool bit. Matter of fact, let's shut that down. Let me close this here. I think that's a good stopping point as far as machining on that for the night. But what I am going to do, and you get what you guys can expect. Let me get the camera up here. Uh, six thou, yeah. All right, let me make sure this is all the way out. So what I'm, whoop, by the way, what we're going to do is I'll dig through all my high speed tool bits and I'm going to grind one. Matter of fact, my <clears throat> uh, carbide grinder is sitting here at the end of the mill, or not the mill, the lathe. Since I've moved here, I haven't plugged it in, I haven't run or anything, so I need to dig it out. I need to get it set up and I need to use it. What I'm probably going to do is, it's like, okay, well, where do I want it? Because I don't use it all the time. Is I'll pull it out, and what I'll probably do is set it on top. People will probably jump, but I don't care. Set it on top of the mill. No, I don't want to do that on top of the mill. The welding table over there, because we keep grit and nasty, is where I like to keep it. Uh, so we'll set it up on the little folding welding table. Make sure I didn't miss any questions here. Uh, and I'll grind the tool bit, the form tool. That way, if you guys haven't watched any of my older videos or this is the first time you're seeing the channel, um, I'll grind a form bit so we can look at that. Uh, the next time I do the live video, which could be tomorrow or the next day or this weekend. So I know it's late here. It's, uh, let's see, it's 22.53 or 10.53 civilian time here, Mountain Standard Time. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, I know who else called here. 2049. Just missed a call. Now we are going to take the diameter down. Don't worry. Let me see. He's probably got a question. No. Get back up here. So we are going to take the diameter down of the pulley. Let me make sure I'm at the right area. We're going to remove, I want to sit down before I start taking the outside diameter down. I've got it narrowed, okay. We got our piece of stock narrowed to approximately this. I want to find out before I start making it smaller, how much smaller. I don't want to go too small. I want to just figure out what diameter, because this is for John, he's watching. You know John. Um, <clears throat> we want to figure out what diameter we want to cut this down to. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to make the form tool. At that time, we'll come back, we'll, we'll make the form tool, we'll cut it down, and then we'll make the groove, and then we'll do the flip-flop with pulling some of this material out to get it lighter. So, there you go. Lots to do. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. That's why I like, that's why I like doing the live feeds, you guys. Again, all these comments here, they all go away. Once I stop the video, once it processes up YouTube, it turns into any like other video, your comments will be there. Uh, you guys, I appreciate the, 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 the ones that have hung around with me through the years. I know I've had to restart the channel, and that's fine. You know what, uh, now that I've got to where I can do these live videos, instead of doing a quick cut net, you guys can see how literally long it takes to make some of these items. Sometimes people get the misconception that Oh, well, I watched a YouTube video and it only took like 30 minutes. You see how long and the workarounds and the oopses or the wait a minute I forgot to's or the at the beginning the accidental oh I drilled it too far, you know. And it gets not everybody can do the videos like I do them here. 
having to think ahead while you're doing and if you're comfortable doing it great if not I mean you know it's 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 tasking really having to concentrate on doing the video plus what you're doing so you don't make a mistake but hey people make mistakes Let's see if we got any other questions here um, two, 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 two. all right make sure I didn't miss any Stephen I will look through my stuff but honestly the idea about just making an adapter to ER32 or adapt and then just use ER32 collets that would be honestly that'd be the best way to do it that way your collet is to try to find that specific collet for that type of holder that way I mean every one is a different size you might as well I mean ER32 collet if you can adapt something to where you can just change out ER32 collets in your tapping head that's honestly the best way because those those style tapping heads the every different size that you need for whatever different you know dimension tap imperial not counting metric they get pricey or they, they don't make them so I know they have imperial and metric ER32 collets but if you have an imperial set you should be able to do pretty much anything you need so let's make sure we didn't miss anything else for the evening no questions all right okay <clears throat> I'll wait a little bit because I know there's about a 60 second delay here um, so yeah that's what we're looking forward to uh, the next video is I'll show the making of the form tool cutting it down and we'll just finish it up hopefully it'll be a real long you know two-part series yep that's the way you learn from you learn from other people oopses um, so hopefully these are you know I like doing these live videos they're beneficial you guys get to see literally how long some of this stuff takes uh, the magic of video editing um, makes things unrealistic at times I think but if you all you want is a cut and dry kind of basic how to do something in and out wham bam thank you ma'am you're done there I mean I've done some of those and when I run across those little tips and tricks and shit like that I'll share it but other than that you guys get to see how long this takes um, and hopefully by me going through these steps and explaining because that's what I like doing you guys learn something so if you decide you want to tackle making a pulley you can watch this, you know, couple hour video or whatever, or you have a good idea about how long it goes. Let's see. Make sure I didn't miss anything else. No, nope. okay. All right. Well, with that, I believe I'm going to call it a day. As far as for the live video, I'm going to fuss around and do some other things here. If you guys, my public email address, if you want to get a hold of me, eagledustoff37 at gmail.com. I appreciate it. Again, Thank you, the viewer. Click like, subscribe, spread the word about the channel. You know, I'm going to be doing some long videos like this. Not a whole bunch of them. Well, maybe over the years. But that way you guys get to see, you know, Friday, Saturday night. Nothing else good on the boob tube. You can sit back and watch me or some of the other YouTube creators out there. So there you go. Take care of yourself and take care of your family. Because remember, at the end of the day, you and your family is all you got. Till next time, get out in the garage. Hey, if you want to make a pulley, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. This stuff is fun. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.